All right, here we go with chapter one on exploring data, section two. This will be the first of two lessons on section two on displaying quantitative data with graphs. These are a few of the learning objectives for this section. We will learn a little bit about dot plots and stem and leaf plots, or stem plots, as our textbook calls it. We should be able to describe the overall pattern of a distribution and identify uh, any outliers. Uh, so again, that's also uh, the overall pattern of a distribution and the shape of a distribution uh, are related to each other as well, too. Um, so that'll be the first day. The second day, uh, we'll be looking at making and interpreting histograms and then comparing distributions of quantitative data. So we'll start with our first graph of quantitative data called dot plots. It's one of the simplest graphs to construct. And what it is done is each data value is shown as a dot above its location on a number line, as you see down here below. So how do we make this dot plot? Well, first of all, we should always draw the horizontal line uh, across, uh, across your paper and then label it with a variable name. So we make sure we get our label down here. Don't have to have any label on the, on the y-axis, just a label on the x-axis. Uh, the scale uh, should be equal as we go along, whether you count by twos, fives, ones, uh, just make sure you do the spacing equally. Uh, so again, the scale would start uh, at the lowest value in the data set and end at the highest value of the data set. You do not need to start the graph, the dot plot at zero. Uh, it really starts at the minimum, and then the maximum value is so the minimum is down here, the maximum value up here. And then we just mark a dot above the location on the horizontal axis corresponding to the each data value. So we can see here we've got a 2, so we made a dot here at 2. We got a dot at 1, and there's a dot at 1. Now the key is, as you build these dots up, make sure that you are keeping them the same size. Make sure that if this one goes up 4, that every place where it's four up is right across from each other. So be careful, be precise with these graphs, don't be sloppy with those. So we're going to look at examining the distribution, and the purpose of a graph is to help us understand it, understand the data. So always ask yourself, what do I see? So these are the questions you should ask yourself. In any graph, look for the overall pattern and for striking departures from that pattern. Well, what do we mean? I'm going to want you to describe the overall pattern. You know, so we're going to describe that overall pattern uh, uh, with these three things. We we'll talk about shape, center, and spread of a graph. And then for the departures, uh, we're going to make sure that we uh, look to see that there's, if there are any values that fall outside the overall pattern. Uh, those are called outliers. So right now we're just going to kind of trust our eyes. We'll learn later a little mathematics behind all that. So what good to remember is, is our textbook talks about don't forget your socks. Our socks would be the shape, outliers, center, and spread. So again, here, shape, outliers, center, and then spread. This is kind of just a little mnemonic device to help you remember when you're asked to examine a distribution or describe a distribution. So, we want to be able to describe distributions, so we're going to concentrate on those main features. And other things we're going to look for are symmetry or clear skewness. Okay. Symmetry is something you would have studied in geometry well back to, so you should be familiar with that. That basically is the same thing on the left side that is on the right side. Uh, there's a line of symmetry going through the middle that oh, if you fold it up on each other, uh, should be the same. So in other words, the right and left sides of a graph are approximately mirror image of each other. A distribution that is skewed to the right, okay, what I talk about with uh, distributions like this that seems to help, is when you look at distributions, we look at these as like little dinosaurs. And if it's skewed to the right, and that's where we've got the tail of the dinosaur. You know, so this is where he's eating down here and and this is like really long brontosaurus tail. So if the tail is to the right, it's a right skewed. If the tail is to the left side of the graph, it is left skewed. So when I kind of look at this distribution, 
I'll look here and see this one kind of. Yeah, it doesn't look skewed either way. It looks like it's pretty symmetric. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly symmetric. It has to be approximately symmetric on the, both sides. So I would say that that's symmetric, where I would say this one. Looks like it's got a little tail down here, so I think that's probably tail skewed to the left. And this distribution here looks like it's got a little more tail to the right side, so I'd say that's skewed to the right. And as you see here, symmetric. Skewed left, skewed right. Okay, so in comparing distributions, uh, some of the most interesting statistics questions involve comparing two groups. So always, always discuss shape, center, spread, and possible outliers. So again, remember your socks. A lot of order there, but still, the mnemonic device will help you. So when you kind of compare these distributions, I would look at this distribution right here. And uh, to me, uh, the uh, shape of this distribution uh, is skewed to the right. The center is probably right about in here, so maybe say you know, something like maybe seven or eight. The spread, uh, spread we can start measuring like from minimum to maximum. We can say that's, uh, let's see, that's three, that's 26. So maybe that spread is about 23 units. And possible outliers, I'd probably look at that one as a possible outlier. The one at 26 is probably an outlier because it's away from that group. As opposed to this one, this is a pretty tight distribution. Um, you know, so I'd probably say this is uh, roughly symmetric. The center is probably right here at about 4. The spread uh, looks like it's uh, maybe from, you know, from 2 to 6. So I'd say that spread is about you know, maybe 4 units. Um, and then possible outliers, I don't really see any outliers. I don't see anything hanging out far away from the group. There we go. Now here's another graph that we're going to look at for quantitative data. So uh, one's called a stem plot. Well, you'll probably hear me say stem and leaf plot. That's kind of uh, more of us old school guys will talk about it that way. So they give us a quick picture of the distribution while including the actual numerical values. Where in the previous uh, dot plots, uh, you don't always or, uh, see all of the values in the graph. You have to actually read the graph to find those values. So this one actually uses the, uh, the number digits. So how do we make these stem plots? So what we're going to do is we're going to separate each observation into a stem, all but the final digit, and a leaf. So again, if we have like numbers like 125, 136, 137, what we'll probably do is have these as stems, the 12, 13, 13 as stems, because these numbers are like in the 120s, 130s. So those would be the stems. Uh, these parts here would be the leaves. So we'll write all possible stems from smallest to largest in a vertical column, in a vertical column. So again, we'll write all those uh, right into here in a vertical column and draw a vertical line to the right of the column. And then the leaves will go uh, in the row to the right. So our stems are right here. The leaves will go into the right side of the, the graph. And then we'll have to rearrange the data after we put them all in to make sure that the leaves here go in increasing order. And then you should always provide a key down the bottom that shows, like if I had, uh, you know, 100 and what the 12 and 5 that, that that means 125. Okay, well, we'll take a look here at the next slide. So the data below are the responses of 20 female AP stat students that ask the question or answer the question, how many pairs of shoes do you have? Now I know some of this data is kind of ridiculous, uh, but we're just going to use it anyway. Um, so we're going to construct the stem plot of this data. So what I looked at here first is I looked at the stems. It looks like all of these numbers, all of these numbers in here, are the lowest ones are kind of in the teens, highest ones are kind of 50. So I look at these as maybe like the teens, the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, and the 50s. And then go through and just start putting the numbers in. So like taking the 0, 0 would go here, the 26, 6 would go here, another 26, etc. But I've already got this kind of plotted out. So we're adding those leaves in. Again, you notice here, making sure these numbers are lined up. First numbers are always lined up each other. Second numbers are always lined up each other. 
So again, being very, very, very precise and accurate with the size of the digits you're drawing here. So if this goes out four digits. I know the numbers here are all out four digits as well too. Don't get sloppy with this stuff. Okay. The problem is now is these numbers are not in increasing order, so we've got to rearrange those numbers uh, to do that. So now we can see those numbers are in order. So we can actually read these now. Like this is 22, 23, 23, 24, 26, 26, 30, 31, etc., etc. And again, make sure you put down a key so people can understand what that means. So the number 49 here represents a female student who reported having 49 pairs of shoes. So other things we can do with stem plots is sometimes the numbers get bunched up. So sometimes you want to get a better picture, we can split the stems. We'll look at an example down below in a second. Two distribution of the same quantitative variable can be compared using back-to-back. -back. So maybe we look at uh, uh, looking at the boys and how many pairs of shoes they have and compare it side by side to the to the young ladies as well. So what we can do is if we got the data that we had just before, the female data from here, we got the male data over here on this side. Yes, that's our new data set. So Maybe what we can do is, instead of having you know, the, the zeros, because I noticed there are some males here uh, that have single digit numbers, so those would be in the zeros or the noughts. And then what we do here is when we're putting numbers in that leaf, we have to split those noughts or the, t the tens and teens, the twenties and thirties into two parts. So generally these are the numbers from zero to four, and these are uh, from five to nine. Okay, so this would be like the, the 10 to the 14, and this would be like the 15 to the 19s in here. All right. So uh, we can do, if we did that, if we split the stems from males in here, uh, we can see the 4 would go here. But as soon as we get to the 5s, they'd go in the second uh, number in the stem because that's the second half of those uh, that category. Okay. Back to back, well, we just have the females, and then again, we do an increasing order going out from the middle. It's like here we went increasing order out from the middle. So we can kind of compare them side by side, which helps us, you know, when we look at this data, uh, we can start to look at, you know, how that is spread differently and where the centers are differently, and kind of compare those data sets side by side. Okay. And again, always remember to put a key down so it explains. Uh, what each of those numbers uh, do mean. All right, well, at this point you should be able to do a few of the homework problems. And uh, uh, first half of lesson 1.2, highlight in yellow here, you should be able to do 37, 39, 41, 43, 45, and 47. Okay, we'll see you later at the day two lesson. Good luck.